Let's spice up my February TBR with this romanticy. Hi guys, this is Dan. Today let's talk about the February TBR. Can you believe the first month of 2024 just fly through and it is the time to think about what to read in February. Time just flies. We all know that there is a big day in February, which is the Valentine's Day. So I will take a step outside of my comfort zone and to pick up a romanticy. Oh my god. I think that recently romanticy has become such a big drama. When you go to a bookshop, you will see colorful covers of those romanticy books, or even book subscription now also do a separate choice for romanticy. With my curious mind, I would like to see why this genre is so popular now. I will stick with all the goals that I have set in 2023, which is to read at least four books in a month and also prioritize book subscriptions first. Once again, I know that four. This number is not big at all in this community, but it is a number that I am comfortable with. I am confident in finishing it by the end of the month. So let's talk about the four books I would like to read in February. The first book on my TBR, which is also a book that I am currently reading, it is The Voyage of the Dam by Francis White. It is a really popular debut novel at the moment, not just where I get it from, Gosper. Pick it as the January GSFF, but also Waterstones and Animacrate are doing a special editions of this one. Speaking of it, I find that the Gosbra's edition probably looks the best. Look at it. I love the fish scales design on it. And my copies is actually signed and numbered. And the numbered on my book is 379, which is quite in the front. On the cover, it says that there will be magic, there will be murder. In this book, we will follow our main character, Ganymede. I hope I didn't pronounce it wrongly because I'm not good at it. I'm just butchering it. He is an heir to one of the 12 provinces in this world. Unlike the other 11 heirs, he has no access to power at all. So when it comes to the 12 day celebration to inherit the power, Ganymede decided to make a mess. However, one of the heirs was murdered during this voyage, trapped in the sea without any access, without any power. Ganymede has to find out who is responsible for the murder, but at the same time, without any power, he has to protect himself from being the next victim. Other than all this you could possibly read from the synopsis, I am around 40 pages into this book. This book is actually having quite an interesting political situation among these 12 heirs or these 12 provinces. There is a political need for a particular substance so that they are all safe and protected from outside dangers. And also there is like a political power imbalance between the North and the South. So far, I think the writing style is quite accessible and quite easy to follow. And I think that murder mystery is quite refreshing to fantasy. Especially last couple of weeks, I was reading some epic fantasies that are so dense and long. That's why I want like a easy read to begin with my February TBR. The second book is actually quite a surprise to me because this is totally outside my comfort zone. And we all know that what is the big day in February. So I have to put this on my TBR. This is The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. First book of the Crescent City series or trilogy. I understand that it may not be the best to pick Crescent City up as the first read of what Sarah J Maas has created. I heard that the best way to read Sarah J Maas is actually by chronological order. The first series you should read is The Throne of Glass and then A Court of Blah Blah and Blah Blah and the last should be The Crescent City. With this chronological reading order, you would understand you will find out all the easter eggs in the later installment and also at the same time you will see how the writing style of Sarah J Maas has improved. I directly dive into the Crescent City only because I want to pick up something that is labeled as romanticy and I am so eager to find out why is it such a big thing nowadays. And you know what, probably Sarah J Maas got the best reputation in this genre. I totally forgot that the first book of the Crescent City actually win the best fantasy in 2020. And Crescent City is the most up-to-date work by Sarah J Maas. And also the last book of this trilogy was just released by the time I am recording it. With all these reasons, I think it is reasonable to pick 
this one up as my first start to romanticy. I was tempted to pick up Fourth Wing, but I am not sure. What I've heard is like there is sex between the dragons. I'm not sure I'm ready for it yet. It's, it might be too much for me already. So let's go for this one first. To be honest, my knowledge about this is really limited. I don't know much about what Sarah J Maas has created with it. When you type this book, House of Earth and Blood on Google or on YouTube, what you will find is the title of this book with spicy scene chapters. I'm not sure, shall I look forward to it? It is an urban fantasy which we follow two characters. One is Bryce, who wanted to find out who murdered or which demon murdered her friend in a party. The other one is Han, who is a fallen archangel. But somehow he gonna help Bryce to find out who murdered her friends because of the freedom in exchange for it. I would do a vlog documenting my very first time reading a romantic which might be quite spicy to me. So if you want to find out how I feel, how I react to certain chapters, whether I like it or not as a romantic book, stay tuned for it. It will be up probably one day before Valentine's Day, which is the 13th. So if you don't want to miss this interesting video of me, someone who never read any romance, someone who never read any romantic picking Sarah JMS up, make sure you have subscribed to my channel. Subscribe to me now, quick, quick, so you won't miss it. Come on. The third book is one that I've got from Christmas. And this is also a goal that I really want to achieve this year, which is to clear as much of books as possible before I get something new in, unless they are like book subscriptions or like House of Earth and Blood that I would like to do a video about. To be honest, I think I have done a good job because I'm going to pick one up and I have finished of Blood and Fire, which is also a book I got from Christmas. So back to the book, it is Judas Blossom by Stephen Iron. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. I'm butchering the names. You can see this book is still wrapped because it is a special edition from the Broken Binding. I will pop a picture of this stunning special edition on the screen for you and you can see it is really beautiful. It is just like I judge a book by its cover to maximum. This book, The Judas Blossom, is the first book of an epic historical fantasy called The Entangle and the Falcon, which reimagined the Mongols' invasion of Persia, and we will follow four characters in the heart of the war. One is a Khan, one is his son, one is the last princess of a tribe, and the last one is the Persian rebel. I can't find too many reviews on the internet about this book, and even on Goodreads, it only got less than 400 ratings. More importantly, the sequel of this series, which is the Blood Deemed Tide is going to release in the summer of this year. So with my recent love of historical fantasy, this one is definitely on my TBR. The last book on my TBR is a recent sci-fi debut and also a Democrate December book. This book is The Principle of Moments by Esme Jikimi Pearson. I quite like the galaxy vibe of this edition and there's also a quote on the cover of this hardback. I would say that this book also is quite out of my comfort zone because sci-fi is not my go-to. This book is also a debut of this author, so I think it is quite exciting to check it out, especially when you can successfully publish your own book. And the author, I believe, is quite young. And you also got a special edition deal with Illumicrate. I think it is quite extraordinary. Talking about the plot of this book, we follow two characters from two different timelines. In the future, human was treated as labor. Asha is one of them who is not happy with the status quo, so she wants rebellion. The other main character is actually from the past, who is called Obi. He is a time traveler who suffered the health consequences from it, and there are some mysteries around him. One day, Obi would meet Asha, and they would embark a journey across galaxy and time. This one sounds quite interesting and exciting, and probably my first time reading a sci-fi, so I couldn't wait to pick it up soon. So here are all the books I would like to read in February. I think some of them are like palate cleanser to refresh my palate after reading so much epic fantasy series. Half of the books are out of my comfort zone, which I am scared, but at the same time really excited to check them out. So if you don't want to miss the video of me, the one who never read any romantic or romance, attempting Sarah J Maas' The House of Earth and Blood, 
make sure you have subscribed to my channel. If you have enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a like. I will see you real soon. Goodbye.